if you look at Bitcoin, the layer one, it's slow. If I send you one BTC today, Kyle, sometimes I'm waiting 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and we're gonna be sitting here longer than our little chat day. And so with the Nakamoto fork, you can just... Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Bitcoin Builders Breakdown. I'm your host, Kyle Ellicott. And today, we're gonna continue our discussion around building on Bitcoin and Bitcoin layers and continuing the topic around decentralized finance or DeFi. Today, we'll be covering a vast majority of what's happening here in Bitcoin DeFi as we look in 2024 to some of the use cases and real world applications that could be applying to some of the merging experiments, technologies and applications in the area. With that, I'm joined by an outstanding guest, one of the OGs of OGs uh, within the Stacks community, uh, none other than Philip from Arcadigo. Philip, a pleasure to have you. A quick introduction on yourself. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Happy to be here. So yeah, you already said it. I'm Philip. I'm one of the core contributors at Arcadico. Arcadico is a uh, stablecoin protocol on Stacks, and I'm also a contributor to Stacking DAO, both on Stacks, by the way. Wonderful. And I, I want to pack apart uh, both of those projects, but maybe let's start with Arcadico. What led to the creation of Arcadico for the few out there who may not be aware of it? Yeah, look, we're three co-founders um, and all of us, the three of us, were all really passionate about just Bitcoin and, you know, cypherpunk, uh, I would say, just the idea that you can use money in a free way to transact on the Internet. And back in 2020, I believe we had this whole craze around Ethereum and DeFi and we looked at the ecosystem and today you have a vast, you know, array of like tokens, L1s everywhere, but Bitcoin is still the king. And we looked at Bitcoin and we saw this asymmetric bet. That's what we always call and we're like, look, there's not much software or protocols or apps built on Bitcoin. And that's still the case today. Imagine that like end of 2020, early 2021. And so we were like... We love DeFi, but it needs to exist on Bitcoin. And so we started building Arcadico. And when when it came to Arcadico and, and developing that, I know you and the team chose uh, to look at stable coins. What, what was the, the purpose of making that choice around stable coins? And at a technical level, how did it all work? Uh, especially, as you mentioned, in that early 2020, 2021 era, uh, post mainnet of Stacks. Yeah, certainly. So... It, it might, you know, be very clear to, to someone, but not someone else, but a stablecoin, you know, for those who don't know what a stablecoin is, it's a token on chain that's always backed to a stable value. In this case, we looked at stablecoins back to the US dollar. And so what led us to to build something like that is simply we looked at the, the, the building blocks that were required to sp spin up a, a DeFi ecosystem. And we looked at like DEXs and you have Alex and we have a small DEX component as well. And, and Alex is great that we were like, okay, what else, you know, should we build? Um, and we, we kind of started off at the same time and we really thought, how can we unlock the liquidity that is behind tokens? And so we started building a stable coin. Um, most of you will probably know USDC and USDT, which are the ones that you trade in and out all the time. But we are a little bit different in the sense that we are a stable coin, but you borrow against your own tokens. Meaning you put in your stacks or your Bitcoin into a smart contract and you create our USDA, our stable coin uh, against that. Got it. And as that has progressed, so now you guys have been live for about two and a half years uh, and and growing and congratulations on your recent anniversary. I believe two years, uh, just a few few weeks ago. Uh, what has been some of the lessons learned having built in Bitcoin DeFi over these last two years, as you've seen such a progression? And now, you know, building on Bitcoin is something being talked about. Is something that's exciting and possible. I have one really important uh, lesson, I think, um, which is do not move fast and break things. <laughs> so I know that's very popular in like Web2 and the Facebooks of the world and Zuckerberg says it himself or used to say it all the time, right? Let's move fast and break things. I think if you're working in DeFi, you want to be very rigorous and kind of on the slow end because you want to make sure that all the systems you develop are working and something like Bitcoin, some call it brittle, some just call it, it never changes. And I think that's a feature, not a bug. And we kind of follow the same methodology. 
We think of things a long time. We develop them. We do a lot of in our in house indoor testing, and then we move, uh, you know, ahead. Or, or just throw something away, which happens all the time. But my two cents to anyone like deploying capital or working in the space is like look at those protocols and try to analyze them from another angle that you would analyze a Web two company and just. Yeah, make sure the their methodologies are rigorous. Uh, that that that's one thing that I learned the hard way sometimes over the past two and a half years. Well, and and now t- applying those lessons, you and a few others uh, helped co-create Stacking DAO. Uh, before we get into how it works, I mean, what's a quick overview of Stacking DAO? Yeah, so um, we call it liquid stacking in Stacks. If you're familiar with other ecosystems, you call it liquid staking. It's it's very much, the, you know, the same thing. Um, you know that you can stack your Stacks tokens. Once you stack those, they kind of become illiquid. They're locked up in the consensus mechanism of, of you know, Stacks, which is called proof of transfer. And we developed a way that you can lock up your tokens, still earn the yield, but have another token called stack, Stacks that represents that yield and still deploy that as liquidity in the DeFi ecosystem. And and why now? Uh, you know, Stacks launched Mainnet January 2021. Fast forward a few years. Here we are. We've, we've got traditional stacking uh, as we, we know it. But now enter liquid sta- stacking. What was right. the timing and the thinking around it? Yeah, so apart from it being technically possible since April of 2023, so we're January 24 now, and so... About eight months ago, we went through a pretty big upgrade on Stacks, and since then it became technically possible. But I think the space as a whole really evolved in the sense that people are more comfortable deploying their capital on chain. Crypto is no longer just the game of the Coinbase's, the Krakens, the Bitstamps of the world, just trading tokens back and forth. But people are really looking, what can I do on chain? How can I use my capital productively? And so we see a lot of like inbound demand just for using liquid stacking, borrowing against their tokens. And again, if we wouldn't have developed it, I hope someone else would have, but it is really needed to be able to, you know, just borrow against your stacks tokens. And we do it in a way that's capital efficient and that still earns you your yield. Very neat. And also now looking at the next big upgrade. So Nakamoto. Uh, you know, due out later this spring in 2024, it's a major upgrade from that of mainnet in January 2021. Uh, maybe real quick, what has you excited about this massive upgrade uh, that also could bring uh, SBTC with it as well? It's the obvious things, I would say. Uh, probably the five-second block times. I think the user experience is going to be awesome on Stacks. Uh, SBTC itself, it, it's the usual stuff. You know, like all the all the capital that's still locked up in Bitcoin can now come to Stacks and we can all use SBTC. So that's really exciting, I think. Um, generally, with Arcadigo, I would say we are one of the first to build a Bitcoin-backed stablecoin, meaning you can take your SBTC on chain and start borrowing against that. So that is huge because today, if you look at BTC, Bitcoin is still, um, you know, hard to program. Yes, you have the whole ecosystem, which was really a Cambrian explosion last year, right? With the ordinals, with all the stuff that has happened, but it's still pretty hard to build advanced logic around it. And that's why we have, we have SBTC and our Bitcoin backed stablecoin. That's going to unlock hopefully millions and billions of liquidity in the next few years. How does that work at a technical level? So if, if we want to have a, a Bitcoin-backed stablecoin, uh, leveraging SBTC as, as you and the team at Arcadico are, how does that work on a technical scale? Yeah, so um, first you need access to SBTC. You can um, do the peg-in, meaning you can just mint SBTC by sending Bitcoin to some threshold signature. And then technically you receive that in your letter or X first wallet. The next step for you as a user, once you have SBTC, by the way, the begging is completely optional. You can also buy it on something like Alex, swap it, maybe some exchanges will start adopting it, but you need that SBTC in your wallet. At that point, you can simply deposit it in a smart contract and choose to mint some amount against it. I'm going to give you a simple example. Say today, SBTC is trading at the same price as BTC. Let's assume they're they're the same asset because they more or less are. They're both synthetic. Well, one is a synthetic version of the other. So let's say as BTC is trading at fifty thousand dollars, we allow you to borrow up to fifty five percent of that amount. Meaning it is over collateralized. You need to put in more collateral than you're allowed to, you know, 
borrow, um, meaning my math is a bit rusty, but 55% of 50,000 should be around $28,000 more or less. Meaning if you put in one SBTC, you unlock $28,000 in liquidity to use on chain for whatever activity you want to do. You want to buy an Alex token or a Deco, or you want to buy your favorite mean coin. And there's a lot of them out there these days on stacks too. Go ahead, we are here to serve you for that. Or maybe you just want to buy something in real life, you know, or some expenses you need to cover, but you don't want to sell your BTC. All of these use cases are really valid, and that's what we unlock. So it sounds like SBTC and, and with the support of the Nakamoto upgrade could potentially support uh, massive transfers of things like uh, Bitcoin or otherwise between not just countries, but organizations and the like, uh, you know, do you see the same? And, and maybe, you know, again, is that something that's a very exciting feature that unlocks in 2024, maybe 2025? Certainly. Um, look, if, if you look at Bitcoin, the layer one, it's slow. It's not super, you know, user-friendly. Like if I send you one BTC today, Kyle, and I say, let's fire off this transaction. Sometimes I'm waiting 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and we're going to be sitting here longer than our little chat takes, <laughs> unfortunately. And so with the Nakamoto fork, you can just either I send you or you send me some SBTC and five seconds later, it's settled. We leverage security of Bitcoin. And I think that's a huge USB for, you know, exchanges who want to implement quick withdrawals and deposits, things like that, because it's a lot more efficient than, than Bitcoin itself. And SBTC ultimately is backed by Bitcoin one-to-one. -one. So over time, as the liquidity grows and the trust improves the system and we get this kind of Lindy effect around SBTC, it's going to be really interesting for payments, for deposits on, on centralized exchanges, for wallets who want to implement it in real life. So I'm quite bullish on it. Yeah. I love it. Philip, with that said, where can everyone go to learn more about Arcadeco, uh, Stacking DAO, yourself? Where can people connect with you online? The easiest is Twitter. Um, so you go to Arcadeco Finance. That's one word, Arcadeco Finance. Are the same for, for Stacking DAO, which is Stacking DAO, also one word. And then my Twitter handle is Philip Hacks. Um, so yeah, if, if you want to connect, I'm always happy to do so. Easiest is on Twitter. Maybe you can put it in the show notes or, or whatever. That'd be the easiest. Thank you. W wonderful. Thank you, Philip, as well. And congratulations on all the success and also uh, the recent launches as well with Stacking DAO. And thank you to all of you for tuning in today. Uh, for those that have tuned in, just to let you know, everything discussed today was for information, educational purposes only, not financial advice. Please do your own research. Uh, make sure to get a chance to check out the experiments, the ideas, the projects that we talked about. But again, do your own research. With that said, I'm your host, Kyle Alicott. And until next time, take care, everybody.